just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. You go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! <laughs> That's literally what I feel like Cannon has done. Yes, they have finally arrived. The EOS R5, I'm just kidding, this is not the R5 or the R6, this is just the R, but man, we have to talk about the new Canon cameras they just released. Oh man. You see, I've always done my best of attempting to not just want to buy every new camera that comes out. If you play that game, you're constantly always going to be underwhelmed by what you currently have because new cameras come out all the time. My philosophy has always been when a new camera comes out, I evaluate the differences between the camera that I have and the features of the new camera. And then I decide are the features that were upgraded from my camera to the new camera, are they important for the work that I do? That's always a suggestion that I give to people because I feel like it's important to not just always try to go after the newest camera and the camera that this YouTuber uses or this filmmaker uses or this camera company. What's most important is that the camera that you have is the right camera for the type of work that you do. And that's the easiest way to put it. You know how like over the last year, everyone's been saying to Canon, like what are they doing taking so long? And I can't believe they don't have a camera that does this and they don't have this and Sony's killing them and all that kind of stuff. They have been sitting and waiting and creating and coming up with this unbelievable camera or two cameras and internally probably just laughing at the fact that people were eventually gonna see these cameras and be like, oh my goodness. Cause it sure seems like it was worth the wait. I've been using the EOS R for the last probably year or so. As you know, if you followed my channel for a while, I was using all GH5s for a couple of years, still outstanding cameras, but I ended up getting an EOS R for vlogging because of the fact that I wanted to just have a camera that had a front facing screen, that had a really good autofocus system because that's really important for vlogging. Then when I got it, I started to really, really like the camera. And obviously I really liked Canon color and all the stuff that they had in the camera and the reliability of Canon and battery life and all that. And so I ended up picking up the C200. The C200 is an outstanding camera for what it does. And I've been just beyond impressed with the capability of this camera and the pro features it does have on it from the standpoint of you know XLR inputs and all the different things that I use a lot when it comes to commercial work. So this camera has been incredible and I have two of them and really, really happy. But even the GH5s had certain things that the C200 did not have that were actually and still are actually kind of hard to get used to. The biggest one being in-body image stabilization. Being able to capture incredible handheld footage with the GH5 is something that we got so used to and it was something that was so nice to have that when I went to the EOS R and there was no in-body image stabilization, obviously I missed it, but it wasn't the end of the world because I was just using this for vlogging. When we use the C200, we have a couple of lens that have stabilization. And so for the most part, we can still get relatively stable shots, but not, you know, unbelievably handheld style stable shots like we do with the GH5. But the C200 still had incredible dynamic range. It still had 4K 60. It still had really good autofocus, all the stuff that we really needed. So it wasn't like I desperately, you know, needed to find a new camera to replace the C200. But then Canon comes and does this. So looking at the R5, 8K 30 frames a second, 4K 120 frames a second, an even better autofocus system, in-body image stabilization, finally, and oh, by the way, $3,800. But they didn't even stop there. You get to the R6, maybe the R5 is a little bit too expensive or maybe you feel like 8K and 4K 120 is a little just overkill for what you need, fine. Well, the R6 still has 4K 60, still has a whole new autofocus system, still has in-body image stabilization, dual SD card slots, just a little bit of, you know, everything you want in a camera, and uh, $2,500. $2,500. 
hundred dollars. Now, before anyone tries to say this video is sponsored by Canon, I will say that I wish it was sponsored by Canon because then I wouldn't have to be dishing out as much money as I'm probably gonna need to dish out to actually get as many of these cameras as I actually want. For me, really the features that are most intriguing to me, honestly, in this order is in-body image stabilization is number one. That's something that we got so used to on the GH5. It was so incredibly easy to shoot handheld and to just get footage out of nowhere for b-roll or whatever it is when we're out shooting with clients and not have to worry about any sort of lens that you need on it or having to have a gimbal with you or anything just being able to grab steady footage is a huge huge thing for me and that's super super important it's something that honestly drives me crazy about the c200 and granted a lot of cinema style bigger cameras like that don't have in body image stabilization the problem is a lot of the type of work that we do is a lot of run and gun stuff and that's a feature that really is super important to me the 8k is obviously a pretty incredible feature but i don't really consider that like a necessity for me because i don't really believe in like future proofing a camera by getting something like 8k because honestly i don't look at any of the kind of cameras that we buy in this category and price category as like ones that you're going to keep forever you're going to always upgrade cameras so you don't need 8k to you know have the camera for the next 10 years or anything because i don't think you'll ever keep a camera for that long i will say that the 4k 120 frames a second is a pretty sweet feature because for some of the work we do we do some slow motion stuff and of course anytime you can get a higher resolution and still have incredible slow-mo at high frame rates is a really, really good option. We don't use it enough that that's like a deal breaker for me, but it is really nice to have a camera that has that type of quality in high frame rates. So yeah, needless to say, the specs on these cameras are amazingly impressive. And like anything, you can't really judge everything just by, you know, tech specs. See, I think over the last couple of years, it's felt to a lot of people like Canon has kind of somewhat disregarded like the the cinema world or the the that pro level market. And I think no question about it, what they've done over the last couple of years with the releases they've had with the C200 and the C300s and 500s and all of the cinema line stuff obviously is just outstanding gear. And then they now kind of enter this category of more of the really legit mirrorless setups that just look pretty dang impressive. So it'll be pretty interesting to see. I have not pre-ordered any yet. So I'm still kind of deciding what I want to do. No question about it. I'm definitely gonna get the R6 to replace my EOS R that I use for vlogging because that's a no brainer to me. It won't cost me that much out of pocket once I sell the EOS R and it will allow me to have some really nice in-body image stabilization and just just great a great, great camera for vlogging. So I'll definitely replace the EOS R with the R6, but I'm trying to decide what the R5 will do in my world and whether I would actually get it and possibly replace the C200s with it because realistically, I probably could sell two C200s and be able to buy at least probably two or three R5s. The C200 has gone down in price a little bit, but I still probably could get maybe three R5s with those two cameras being sold. So I'm debating, like, do I get rid of the C200s and get three R5s to replace it? Do I just get rid of the whole GH5 rig and get, you know, a couple grand for all of that stuff and then just get two R5s so that I have two R5s and two C200s? That's kind of more the direction I'm leaning. And then just kind of have an entire Canon lineup, which would work well because I'd be able to just use all of my lenses for all of the cameras, which would be awesome. Yeah, so I'm still kind of debating before I just pull the plug on thousands of dollars worth of pre-orders on stuff. I just got to figure out what I think makes the most sense, but no question about it. When I get them, when I get them. For now, it's just a pretty awesome time to just be a filmmaker. The, the capabilities that we have in cameras now and the quality that we can get from these little cameras that are out, is just mind blowing. I'm curious if you uh, are getting one yourself. So comment below, tell me kind of what's most intriguing to you. Are you getting one? Are you getting a couple? Are you getting the R5 or R6? Let me know, but that's my thoughts on them.